I want to look at the solution to a non-ideal gas law problem. Now, in a non-ideal gas, also called a real gas, the molecules themselves take up space, as opposed to an ideal gas where the molecules are just a point source. So when the temperature becomes real low, or the pressure becomes real high, but in this problem it's going to be the temperature getting low, the attraction between molecules becomes significant because they begin to get close together. So we're going to consider that the state equation for one mole of a real gas is PV equals RT plus A over V, where P is pressure, V is volume, R is the gas constant, and T is the Kelvin temperature. Now we're going to have this constant A, which depends on the intermolecular attraction distance. And we're given the constant A as 0.364 kilograms meters to the fifth per second squared. And we're asked to find work done to the gas during an isothermal, irreversible, excuse me, reversible expansion from 0.2 liters to 22.4 liters. And then we're going to compare that with, a, with the same data, using the same data, compare that to the ideal gas law. So we're asked to find work, and we can define work as work is equal to the integral from volume 1 to volume 2 of P dV. Now we're going to need an expression for pressure because pressure is going to be changing. We, it's not a constant. See, P not constant. However, we have an expression that was given to us by the state equation provided that we're in equilibrium and we've already decided we are in equilibrium. So we can say that P is going to be equal to RT over V plus A over V squared. Now A comes in pretty strange units. It's kilograms, it's kilograms meters to the fifth uh, per second squared. However, if we were to divide that by meters cubed, which is volume, we would come out with kilograms meters squared per second squared, which is the same as joules. And so I think that we're going to be safe in using the units they have. We just need to make sure that everything stays in SI units. And we also have liters. Well, 0.2 liters is going to be 0 0.0002 two cubic meters so that we can keep in SI units. And 22.4 liters is going to be 0 0.0224 cubic meters. Now we just need to plug the expression for pressure into the integral and see what we get. So we'll write work is equal to V1 to V2 of, this is going to be RT over V plus A over V squared dV. Now if we can integrate this, we should have a value that we can plug into a calculator. All right, now before I proceed to integrate this and you're totally lost with respect to what's going on, I'm going to do a quick calculus review. So if we have the integral of a constant uh, x dx, where x is any function actually, then that is going to be, you can bring the constant outside the integral. So that's the integral of the constant times whatever the function is dx. If you have the integral of a sum, in this case it would be like u of x uh, plus some arbitrary v of x, another function dx, then that is the sum of the integrals. So that's the sum of u of x dx plus the integral of v of x dx. Uh, if we have the integral of 1 over x, that is, and this one's unique, that is log x. Um, if we just to show you that in as a definite integral, because it does change ever so slightly when you do the definite integral, you can combine these and that will become log of 
x2 over x1. Uh, another one that we might need here, we will need here, is 1 over x squared dx. That one is equal to the integral of x to the minus 2. Minus 2, you see how I did that. That is equal to, that integral is minus x to the minus 1, which is the same as minus 1 over x. Now, if you... If you think about how you do these derivatives, particularly this last one, it's just the power rule. So if we had the derivative of minus x to the minus 1, which is what we say this is, dx, then that is going to be equal to minus minus x to the minus 2, which is 1 over x squared. So you can see how I went in reverse and got right back where I was, and that how, that's how that integral is done. So based on the review, we can now write down the integral that we want. So we're going to have work. Work is equal to this integral, v1 to v2, rt over v, plus a over v squared dv. And that, finally, is going to be equal to R T times the log of V2 over V1 plus A over V1 minus A over V2. Now, before we proceed to the calculator, there's one more thing we ought to do, which is to make sure that we have consistent units. So we know that we have a value for R, and that is 8.3144 joules per mole K. Joules per mole K. We also know that that R is this R right here. Next, that's our gas constant. Next, we have a value for T. We were given a value of 60k. And next we have this log term, which has got v2 over v1. We'll go ahead and write those down, even though they're going to cancel. So v1 is going to be 0 0.0002 cubic meters. And v2 is going to be 0 0.022 four cubic meters. And then just let's look at the units in the first expression, just the units only. So that's going to be joules moles to the minus one k to the minus one. That's the R. That gets multiplied times temperature, which is k. And then it gets multiplied times the log term, which is going to be unitless. And so what you see is that we can cancel the two k's and so that our units are going to turn out to be, our units are going to turn out to be joules per mole for that term. Now the other term we already went through before and we found that it was joules. However, we're working with just one mole of material. So this term is also going to be joules per mole. And this term right here is the same thing. It's also going to be joules per mole. So our units are consistent all the way through. And now we can take the values and go to a calculator. And when we are finished with the calculation, we know that our answer is going to be in joules per mole, or basically in joules. So now I'll bring up the calculator. Let's see. And we have defined R, A, we've defined V1 and V2 and temperature. We've defined our work. It's going to be R times T times the log of V2 over V1 minus A over V2 plus A over V1. And that's going to be 4,161. And since we're totally in SI units, that number is in joules. Now we've also been asked to define to find the work using the ideal gas law. 
Uh, in the ideal gas law, we know that PV equals nRT, and since n is 1 for this problem, we're going to have P is equal to RT over V. Now, work hasn't changed. Work is still going to be the integral from V1 to V2 of pressure times a change in volume. And this time, it will be um, R times T times the log of V2 over V1. We, we basically did that and then just had some other terms before. So this is going to be particularly easy to define work. So now we can just bring up the calculator again. And I've already got this ready so we can space down. And you see that the work defined with the ideal gas law is gas constant times the temperature times the log of V2 over V1. And that is 2,353 joules. Now, the difference between 4161 and 2353 is that in the ideal gas law, each molecule is a point source. Thus, expansion doesn't require as much work to separate them. And that is, that's the difference that you'll see a lot of times, whether it's compression or separation or any kind of work. It, you have to do more work on the non-ideal gas. All right, that's all there is. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it educational.